from the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania. It's your News 13, brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. Another election day has come and gone, and once again, there were some shocking results on a local and county level. The voters have spoken, and some sent a strong message of wanting change. Good evening, and thanks so much for joining us, everyone. I'm Kristen Bozinski. It was a landmark election, one that will go down in Luzerne County history. There were major upsets, while other candidates easily held their positions. Tonight News 13 has your wrap-up of Decision Day 2011. We start with our Nikki Cries, who has a recap of several important local races. I've never let Hazelton down, and now Hazelton didn't leave me down. There were a lot of smiles and cheers at the Hazelton Elks Lodge Tuesday night as Mayor Joe Yanuzzi thanked his supporters after finding out he was re-elected. I now have four years to not worry about being re-elected. I have four years to save our city, our great city, Hazelton. It was a close race, but Yanuzzi defeated Democrat Grace Cuzo by 158 votes. I'm very proud. I think the people that helped me were great, and I think I did a good job. But I think it also said to Joe, you're not, we're not happy here. If it was that close, there is something not right, and maybe Joe will listen now. There was some shuffling around when it came to Hazleton City Council. Longtime incumbent Evelyn Graham was not elected to another term, but she tells News 13 she still has high hopes for Hazleton. Just the same as it has always been to try to somehow stay out of debt, continue with the good works we've done so far, and hope for the future. Top vote getter Keith Bast was overwhelmed by the support, but says he's ready to get on board. Get our fiscal house, everything is starting to come together, and start doing everything that we can to improve the conditions of the city, try to attract businesses to come in. And, and taking a step forward in the direction of the city. Democrat Jean Mope will be another new face. She held a writing campaign in the primary. We need to focus on the infrastructure of the city first, like I said once before. The city has to get together. We have to go over each department, see where our weaknesses are, where our strengths need to be, our assets, anything that we're vulnerable to vulnerable in, we have to correct and fix these problems in-house first. Over in Hazel Township, the voters have spoken. Incumbent Bill Gallagher was re-elected as supervisor over Richard Wenches. We're working on the roads again. We're working on the new road. We started to tree going toward the bridge. Hopefully maybe another year or two we'll have the dinner connect into Arby's. Uh, a lot of projects. You know, the township's so big that, you know, any, any small project is always a big project for us. We're going to keep doing what we can do, you know, giving them the best in fire protection and, and trying to get the roads cleaned in the storms and just keep going where we were going. A race that was uncontested in Hazel Township was that of Magisterial District Judge. Jamie Dixon was elected to the position. I, I can't wait to take over and, and, and start my new position. I have a lot of changes that I'd like to make and obviously we'll treat everyone fair and impartially and do the right thing to make the community a safer place. West Hazelton voters have elected a new face to council. Paul Platukas is a former administrator in the Hazelton area school district. In the first ward, Tom Nemeth received the most votes, and in the second ward, James Kalaga ran uncontested. And over on the north side, Freeland Mayor Tammy Martin held on to her position. The incumbent is happy to continue to serve the borough. We're just going to continue to work for, move forward until everything we were working. We're getting our police department back where it should be. The streets department's back where it should be. We're going to try to straighten everything out and move forward from there. Two incumbent council members retain their seats in Freeland, John Petoskey and John Buda. What you can see in the future is more cooperation. I think uh, we have a uh, good, strong police force in town now and uh, good streets department, and I think we're, uh, we're moving forward. We're going to do the best we can to uh, keep improving the security and the police department fire department and safety for the citizens of Freeland and visitors. Former Councilwoman Barbara Talanowski won the third seat on Borough Council. I'm Nikki Kreis for News 13. Well, there's even more races in Luzerne, Carbon, and Schuylkill counties. News 13's Christina D'Amato continues tonight's coverage of our election results with more from the winners. 
News 13 was in Butler Township as longtime police chief Charlie Ottmiller was declared the next supervisor. Ottmiller defeated Jim Caffrey. I'm grateful for everybody that, that came out and voted for me. And I wanted, uh, I know that there's people behind the scenes like my manager, Francis Petrovich, who worked diligently and on. And I was just thankful for everybody that put their faith in me. Ottmiller might have a chance to start work as a supervisor sooner than other election winners because of the vacancy left by the death of Robert Shellhammer. The township's vacancy board scheduled a meeting for tonight. They could appoint Ottmiller to fill the vacancy right away. I have to put my uh, faith in the two gentlemen that are in there right now and go with them at the beginning of this session and uh, also be open to public opinions from everybody. Uh, you know, I, I, need, I need help. I can't do this on my own, and I think that people in the Valley can give me good sound advice, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Tricia Schott was elected the first female township supervisor in the history of Banks Township. And it was a very close race for Cunningham Council's four open seats. What a battle of the ballot it was with around 525 write-in votes. News 13 spoke with Mayor Joe Corelli last night who says even with the write-ins, these people came out on top. Some media outlets are reporting that Gary Gregory, Jill Hawk, Rose Hart and Raymond Montoni are the winners. We can continue on being for Cunningham first and keeping the agenda that we had in the past and to work with uh, our authority on coming up with a 537 plan, on coming up with a new agreement. I'm glad that we're moving on and we're, we're going to be working together, I hope, with everyone on board now and as far as the authority is concerned. And again, we have to focus on thinking about Cunningham. Cunningham is first, as far as I'm concerned. Incumbents Mary LaBert, William Slovic, and Marion DeBalco kept their seats on McAdoo Borough Council. John Perhonich joins them. Well, I'm just grateful and humble that uh, McAdoo citizens came out to vote, as many as they did. And um, I just appreciate everybody who did come out and all my other co-candidates and the mayor for uh, all that he did. And I really want to really, I'm looking forward to working with them and moving the town forward. Well, I hope we can move forward and, and get some of these things accomplished on the streets and, the, and some of the derelict buildings that we have and uh, move on from there with the police department also. And we thank all the people of McAdoo for coming out to vote and for voting for us. Democrats swept the race for three seats on Beaver Meadows Borough Council. Voters picked Anthony Rusnock, Alfred Mitchell, and Richard Donald. Christina D'Amato, News 13. Christina, thank you. Now three were welcomed back and two new faces will be added to the Hazelton area school board. Incumbents Dr. Bob Childs, Tony Bonomo and Brian Early will return to the board. Two first-time candidates were also elected. Retired teacher Robert Wallace received the most votes and Republican Marfie Dagenhart Yannick won the fifth seat on the board, beating out Democrat candidate Rocco Formica. Childs, Bonomo, Early and Wallace won both the Democratic and Republican nominations in the May primary. Dagenhart Yannick and Formica were the only candidates to appear here on just one ballot. News 13 spoke to each of the winners last night in our live election special. Many say they can't wait to sit down and do what is best for the kids. Well, you can say Stephanie Salavantis of Shavertown came out of left field. After launching a successful write-in campaign in the spring, the 29-year-old fresh face out of law school pulled one of the biggest upsets of the general election, beating incumbent Jackie Musto Carroll. Salavantis won the office by the slimmest of margins last night. You might remember she referred to the judicial scandal in her campaign ads, portraying Musto Carroll as an enabler of the judge's abuses. Salavantis says she has never prosecuted a criminal case, but plans to make a lot of changes when she takes over the office. She talked to our political panel during our live election show. I would like to specialize the office and use the, the experienced assistant district attorneys that we have, the wonderful prosecutors in the office, and use their, their abilities more efficiently. I want to specialize the office. So that is one area that I'd like to focus on and actually have more of a presence in southern Luzerne County. So, so those are areas that I'd like to jump into and, and see what I could do. 
Musto Carroll told reporters from the Citizen's Voice last night after learning about her defeat that she didn't think the issues were fairly drawn. She said, quote, it wasn't about my experience or my accomplishments. It wasn't about kids for cash. I assisted the FBI. I was on the right side, end quote. Musto Carroll said she would likely return to private practice when her term ends in January. Tuesday's election will have a long-lasting impact on what happens inside the Luzerne County Courthouse, the center of controversy for almost three years now. And many were calling Tuesday a historic day because voters got to select six judges at one time. Jennifer Rogers of Harvey's Lake secured the most votes of the seven candidates on the ballot for Luzerne County Judge. Other winners included Magisterial District Judge Fred Parentoni of DuPont, Joe Sklarowski Jr. from Mountaintop, Michael Vaux from West Pittston, Dick Hughes of Mountaintop, and Lisa Gelb from Laughlin. When the judges elect take office in January, the Court of Common Pleas will return to its full complement of 10 judges since the judicial corruption scandal. And for the first time, three women will serve as judges in Luzerne County. The election was also historic because come 2012, Luzerne County will have a new form of government. The initial 11 members of the new Luzerne County Council emerged from a field of 28 candidates. You might remember that voters approved the switch to home rule a year ago. And the person who received the most votes is a familiar face in Greater Hazleton, Rick Morelli. He won a four-year term along with current County Commissioner Stephen A. Urban, Jim Bobeck, Tim McGinley, Edward Braminski and Stephen J. Urban. The winners of two-year terms are Elaine Madden Curry, who is another familiar face to Greater Hazleton, Harry Haas, Rick Williams, Linda McCloskey Hauk, and Eugene Kahelier. Now the council and the home rule government will take over on January 2nd. From Luzerne County to Schuylkill County, where for the first time in four years, the county will be run by Republicans. Incumbent Minority Commissioner Frank Stoudenmire and his running mate, political newcomer George Halkovich, will be the new majority commissioner starting in January of 2012. They will be joined by Democrat Gary Hess, the new minority commissioner. All three commissioners have said they will work together to move Schuylkill County forward. This new majority comes after current Democrat commissioners Manchura Gallagher and Francis McAndrews decided that they would not seek re-election. The new board of commissioners will be sworn in December 29th. They'll meet for the first time January 2nd and elect their chairman at that time. There's more to come tonight here on your community news station. Flames engulfed a trailer at one local school. We'll tell you about the damage coming up. And later, the streets in Hazleton are a bit safer tonight as four known drug dealers are locked up in federal prison. Stay with us. Stay tuned for great local programming all night long right here on SSP TV. At 6 o'clock, it's the Sam Lasan Show. Join Sam as he discusses Silent Santa. And then from 6.30 to 8, you can find your favorite local programming on SSPTV.com. 8 o'clock, we'll be back on Channel 13 with our news rebroadcast. At 9 o'clock, it's rebroadcast of the Sam Lasan Show. And at 9.30, it's Real Life in the OR. Join Channel 13 as we take you inside the operating room as Dr. Mead performs knee repairs and replacements. Don't forget about the other rebroadcast for news at 10 and 11.30. And thank you for making News 13 your number one local news station. You're watching News 13 brought to you by SSP TV and The Standard Speaker with Janine Mazurkiewicz, Kristen Bozinski, Christina D'Amato, and Nikki Grimes. Make your dollars go further. There's one place that delivers unlike any other, your Toyota dealer. So don't just trade in, trade up to Toyota during the Toyota Trade Up Sales Event. Trade up to Corolla or RAV4 and get 0% APR financing. Or lease a fuel-efficient Corolla for as little as $169 a month. Or trade up and lease a new RAV4 for only $189 a month. Don't just trade in, trade up to Toyota. Save with great deals today and a better value tomorrow. When your car has seen her last mile, you want to make sure her old parts and fluids go here and not here. At Harry's u Pullin', we dispose of your old car parts the right way, recycling every piece possible. From parts to fluids, when you bring your old car to Harry's, you'll know that our state-of-the-art system 
is keeping your footprint as green as possible. Harry's You Pull It. Your eyes are the windows to your world. Doctors Kislin and Wozmanski want you to know that preventative eye exams are an important part of your family's health care. Early diagnosis and treatment of eye diseases are critical to maintaining good vision. Dr. Alexander Wozmanski specializes in pediatric care and performs ocular diabetic exams, cataract evaluations, and LASIK screenings on patients of all ages. She's welcoming new patients at both the Hazleton and Stroudsburg Eye Specialist locations. Visit us online at drkislin.com. An honest day's work has long been ingrained into the fabric of this region and its people. Doing your best not because you're told to do so, but because it's for a greater good. So while we appreciate being recognized for our hard work, we wouldn't have done it any other way. From a bank that considers exceptional customer satisfaction just part of the job description. First National Bank. The right choice. Right here. Right now. Well, the day started early for local firefighters and some Hazleton area school district officials. Flames erupted in the 3 o'clock hour. A modular classroom parked outside the ninth grade center was on fire. This is what it looked like when firefighters arrived at the building this morning. The roof of the classroom was completely engulfed in flames. We're told the blaze originated in the building's heating unit and may have been caused by an electric coil that overheated. When News 13 stopped by the school today, a state police fire marshal was on hand sifting through the damage. We're told the modular classroom was used for physical education class and desks and filing cabinets were damaged. District officials say the damage is not fixable and the space will most likely be used for parking. The fire did not disrupt classes today. The phys ed class was moved inside one of the other buildings. We're told the district's other modular classrooms will be checked out to make sure a similar situation does not happen to them. We first broke the news during our live election coverage Tuesday night that shots reportedly rang out near the Humboldt Industrial Park. Details were sketchy and state police still have not said much about what exactly went down. News 13 on the scene at a business along Route 924 where troopers were called for a report of shots fired right around 930 Tuesday. Troopers did find evidence of gunfire and call it a case of trespassing at U.S. Trucks and Parts and said that they had one in custody and they were searching for two other potential suspects who got away. No confirmation if anyone was injured. However, an ambulance was called to the business and arrived while News 13 was there as well. State police out of Hazleton continue to investigate what exactly happened here, but ask anyone with information to call them at 459-3890. Troopers have not released any names involved as of this 5 o'clock hour. A 21-year-old Hazleton man who is no stranger to the law is once again behind bars tonight. Pedro Adolfonso was arrested Tuesday night in the city and charged with public drunkenness. Police say he also had drug paraphernalia on him. Turns out Adolfonso was a wanted man with a warrant out for his arrest from Luzerne County probation. Adolfonso was just arrested back in September. State police wanted him on a number of drug charges. On your screen right now, you're winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played everyone. Your daily number, 887 Big 42602, Quinto 01809, and Treasure Hunt 269 Good evening, everyone, and thank you for making News 13 your number one local news station. Here's your lineup for Thursday. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. Happy birthday to Robbie John. This wish comes from your dad, your mom, Ashley, and Abby. And now for tonight's Talk of the Town. There will be a holiday bazaar hosted by the Cunningham United Methodist Church. This will be held Saturday, November 12th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. There's great food, attic treasures, heirloom jewelry, crafts, bake sale, and an auction. For more information, please call 570-788-3960. And that's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 extends our deepest sympathies to the family and friends of these recently departed. Gloriosa A. Costic of Hazleton, a massive Christian burial will be held Thursday at 10 a.m. for the Annunciation Parish of the Church of St. Gabriel. 
Friends may call today from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home. Francis A. Stasek of McAdoo. The funeral will be held Friday at 12.30 p.m. from the Damiano Funeral Home. Kenneth Joseph Yannick of Weatherly. Private arrangements are being handled by the family. Travis Johnson of Nuremberg. Memorial services will be held at a later date. William Zabrowski Sr. of McAdoo. Funeral services will be held at the convenience of the family. Francis Sisak, formerly of West Hazleton. Funeral services will be held at a later date. And Albert C. Logan of Shenandoah. The Willuka Bichorvitz Fell Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes. Call 570-454-0111. Modern Smile Family and Cosmetic Dentistry, now accepting new patients. Under the direction of Dr. Anna Hajiva, our services include intraoral video camera exams, digital x-rays, bonding and veneers, whitening, root canals, crowns and bridges, dentures and implant consultations, and non-surgical gum treatment. We're located at 14 West Aspen Street in Hazleton. Call us today at 454-8511. Now at Boscov's, the world's greatest sale with honest pricing. Here's proof. 58% off Madison Taylor embroidered cozy fleece sets for missies and petites, $19.99. Save $40 to $45 with our ladies' easy spirit buyout. Four styles, $29.99. 66 to 75% off men's lounge pants, $4.99. And 72% off long sleeve college t-shirts, $6.99. Now you know why it's the world's greatest sale at all Boscov's. Next time you're driving down the road and you want to send a text to a friend, think twice. It could be a costly message. With the signature of Governor Tom Corbett, Pennsylvania officially became the 31st state to enact a ban on the use of any kind of handheld texting device by a driver. The governor signed the bill into law at an AT&T store in Camp Hill today. The law does take effect in March. The new law gives police the authority to pull over and cite a texting motorist. 50 bucks violations, again, could carry a $50 fine. Keep in mind, talking on a handheld device is still legal behind the wheel in the Keystone State. State Representative Tara Tuhill took on a new role today and joined some local home health care workers as they stepped inside a patient's home. The unique ride-along was part of National Home Health and Hospice Month. Tuhill paid a visit to Vincent Filarito. He's a Hazleton man suffering from chronic illnesses. Now, Filarito has had a home health care nurse come to his house for several years. This morning, Tuhill checked out the program and saw firsthand what it's all about. It's a wonderful program where the hospital actually comes here to the home and takes care of the patient. Uh, so I'm getting to see what the home health nurse does and I'm getting to look at the telehealth monitoring, uh, which is a new system that we have here in the Hazleton area. Home health is an excellent alternative to being in the hospital or being in a skilled nursing facility. There are many, very many things that can be done at home, which otherwise you might have to be in a skilled nursing facility, such as IV antibiotics or IV hydration, wound care, therapy. So those are all things that home health can provide. There are 7.8 million people in Pennsylvania who have chronic illness and many benefit from home health care. Well, another nice day in Greater Hazleton, but as we inch closer and closer to the weekend, the rain clouds will be moving in, starting with a chance of showers tonight. Low down to 43 this evening as the rain possibly would fall here in Greater Hazleton. Clouds move in, showers tomorrow. We'll see the temp climbing up to 52 degrees here in Greater Hazleton. Live at 530, we'll take a look at the weekend, which is inching closer. That does it for News 13 Live at 5. Check us out at ssptv.com for more news and information from around Greater Hazleton. The Standard Speaker Online is where you can find breaking news as it happens throughout the day and night. And don't forget to friend us on Facebook. Coming up at 5.30, we'll tell you about an investigation that has led to the arrest of several local gang members. We'll also have an extended look at your forecast and sports with the one and only Freddie B. Stay right here. Your Live at 5.30 is coming right up. 
Freeland Senior Apartments, independent living at affordable prices for seniors and persons with disabilities. Affordable one-bedroom apartments to fit your needs, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, community room, on-site laundry and security system, free prescription delivery, and pets are welcome. Within walking distance of pharmacies, healthcare providers, restaurants, and more. Come visit us, 403 Ridge Street in Freeland, or call 570-636-2537. Savings of the Green Sale event is now in progress. Experience tomorrow's technology today with EarthWise vinyl windows and doors installed by Just Windows and much, much more. Saving energy daily translates into saving money. And saving Mother Earth for tomorrow's generations of homeowners is priceless. So take the leap to a more eco-friendly home with an environmentally friendly windows and doors from Just Windows and much, much more. Ashley, you forgot about free estimate. Come on, man. Call today for a free estimate. Tell them Ashley sent you. For three generations, the Cut family have kept alive the traditional values and quality that you've grown accustomed to. Nestled on 200 acres in the beautiful Lewistown Valley, Cux is proud to offer over 60 products in both fresh and frozen. Some of our products include all natural and organic whole turkeys, smoked turkey breasts, drums and wings, turkey barbecue, turkey meatballs, and much, much more. Our newest offering, Little Gobbler Turkey Bites, are all natural and go from the oven to the dinner table in about 10 minutes. The retail store is open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 to 4. And we're at the Hometown Farmer's Market every Wednesday. Check out the newly designed Chrysler 200, or how about the two-door Jeep Wrangler or four-door Unlimited. Jeep Patriot is named best Price SUV in America. Jeep Grand Cherokee styling is second to none. Jeep Compass named top 10 fuel-efficient SUV with sophisticated styling. It's Ram commercial truck season. Get what you deserve, power, performance, and a Dodge Ram. How about Dodge Journey? Seat 7 with four-wheel drive, a winning combination. Dodge Durango, let the towing begin. Best in class, up to 7,400-pound capability. It's All-American Tamaqua. The Hollywood Diner and Sports Bar is now well established in the greater Hazleton area. Think Hollywood for great food. Think Hollywood for great entertainment. Think Hollywood for a great atmosphere with family and friends. Open seven days a week and 24 hours on the weekend with lunch and dinner specials by Chef Drew on Dishon. The Hollywood Diner, where everyone is treated like a star. Now that's a deal day every day, not just the end of the month, not just Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, not just the second Tuesday of the week. Every day is deal day at Independence Toyota. And remember, if you don't have this license plate frame on the back of your Toyota, you probably paid too much. Independence Toyota Airport Beltway, across from Walmart, Hazleton, or on the web at independencetoyota.com. Four known drug dealers and gang members are behind bars tonight and police are searching for more who are said to be involved. Sending a message that crime and drugs are not welcome in the city is where we begin tonight, live at 5.30. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Hi again everyone, thanks for staying with us tonight. I'm Kristen Bozinski. Well, one of the major issues in Hazleton's mayoral election was crime and drugs in the city. As of this morning, the streets in Hazleton are a little safer as four known drug dealers and gang members are behind bars. That announcement came late this morning as Hazleton Police Chief Robert Ferdinand held a news conference with members of the FBI. Four Hazleton men were arrested today. Alexis Guzman, Carlos Rio Martinez, Ornelli Sanchez, and Charles Wilford. The four face a long list of drug charges and are in federal federal prison. Chief Ferdinand says the most of the four have prior criminal records and several are known gang members. Arrested on federal Today's arrests are part of a six-month federal investigation involving the selling of cocaine, crack cocaine, and heroin in the Hazleton area. Drugs and firearms are recovered at the listed locations. More arrests will follow in the next few days and weeks However, information cannot yet be uh, revealed uh, as they are sealed federal indictments. Now, police are still searching for this man, who they say also played a big role in the crimes. He is Felix Arango. 
and he is believed to be in the Hazleton area. If you have any information on his whereabouts, you are asked to call Hazleton City Police at 911 or even call the FBI in Scranton at 344-2404. We're told this is an ongoing investigation and more arrests will be made during the coming weeks. Local police and state officials raided an underground bar that was operating in downtown Hazleton. According to the standard speaker, over 100 people were packed into the basement of 12122 West Broad Street early Sunday morning when state liquor control enforcement officers showed up and kicked everyone out. Liquor control enforcement officer supervisor Brian Langen of the Wilkesbury office told the standard speaker that in addition to serving alcohol after hours. No one had a license to sell alcohol in the first place. According to the report, the names of the three operators of the illegal establishment will be released once they are charged. The Liquor Control Enforcement Agency was alerted to the place by Hazleton Police, who reported suspicious activity at the vacant building. After officers saw a large number of people at the building in the early morning, hours several weeks ago. Undercover liquor control enforcement agents made purchases of alcohol at the operation Sunday morning after organizing an investigation with city police. No word on how long the place had been operating illegally, but it would fill up around 2 a.m. and patrons paid a $5 cover charge. You can read more about this in today's edition of the standard speaker. But in addition, News 13 learned earlier today that there was an accident right around the time of that raid Sunday involving possible patrons of the place who were told to leave. It happened in the parking lot at Mine and Laurel Streets. 33-year-old Karen Crispell of Orangeville, Pennsylvania, was behind the wheel, was intoxicated, and had a suspenders, suspended driver's license. There was a 29-year-old man in the car as well who was cited for public drunkenness. Also, three females, all juveniles, were in the car and had been drinking as well. None were with a legal guardian and ranged from 16 to age 12. All three face underage drinking charges. The driver faces a long list of charges including DUI, hit and run, and endangering the welfare of a minor. The day started early for local firefighters and some Hazleton area school district officials. Flames erupted in the 3 o'clock hour. A modular classroom parked outside the 9th grade center was on fire. And this is what it looked like when firefighters arrived at the building this morning. The roof of the classroom was completely engulfed in flames. We're told the blaze originated in the building's heating unit and may have been caused by an electric coil that overheated. When News 13 stopped by the school today, a state police fire marshal was on hand sifting through the damage. We're told the modular classroom was used for physical education class and desks and filing cabinets were damaged. District officials say the damage is not fixable and the space will most likely be used for parking. The fire did not disrupt classes for the day. The phys ed class was moved inside one of the other buildings. We're told the district's other modular classrooms will be checked out to make sure a similar situation does not happen to the them. Well, it's another sad day in Nittany Lion country as the winningest college football coach has announced he would step down at the end of the season. 84-year-old Joe Paterno met with his coaching staff and players this morning. He broke down in tears as he made that announcement that he would be leaving. His retirement stems from criticism that he did not take more action after someone came to him and reported seeing former coach Jerry Sandusky in the university showers with a 10-year-old boy. Paterno notified athletic director Tim Curley and vice president Gary Schultz. Joe Paterno is in his 46th year as coach of Penn State's football team. The university's board of trustees could force Paterno to leave sooner than the end of the season. All right, coming up live at 530, candidates battled it out on the ballot in what's being called a historic election for Luzerne County. It was also an important election for the many of, many of our local races that happened across Greater Hazleton. News 13 has your election recap tonight of all of the winners. You're watching News 13 with Janine Mazurkevich, Kristen Bozinski, Christina D'Amato, and Nikki Cross. Hey, can you toss me that tape measure? Here you go. Woo, still got it. Football season.
And great deals are waiting for you at Burger Family Dealerships. Like a new GMC 1500 regular cab 4x4 starting at $25,995. Plus, we'll pay more for your trade guaranteed. Just off I-81, exit 145 Hazleton. Since 1921, drive with experience. Smile. It's Boscov's big toy sale. Save $15 on Sesame Street's Let's Rock Elmo. $54.99. Rock on, Elmo. Holiday Barbie by Mattel. $39.99. 50% off Max or Molly Holiday Plush. $9.99. And 20% off our entire stock of board games. Milton Bradley, Parker Brothers, and more. Free gift wrap and free layaway during the big toy sale at all Boscov's. When your car has seen her last mile, you want to make sure her old parts and fluids go here and not here. At Harry's You Pull It, we dispose of your old car parts the right way, recycling every piece possible. From parts to fluids, when you bring your old car to Harry's, you'll know that our state-of-the-art system is keeping your footprint as green as possible. Harry's You Pull It. Jimmy's. We are two! Holy Rosary Parish, located in Hazleton, would like to invite the community to That You May Have Life, a contemporary musical presentation of the stories in St. John's Gospel. It will be held Friday and Saturday, December 2nd and 3rd at 7 p.m. Refreshments will be served after each presentation. There is no charge, but a free will offering will be accepted. For more information, call 570-454-6693. When it comes to all of your grocery needs, shop Boyer's Food Markets at two locations, 15th Street in Hazleton and South Hancock Street in McAdoo. Here are this week's specials. Every weekend, look in our hot food area for wings, tenders, and other party favorites. Don't forget about our gift cards and our senior citizens discounts. We also have double coupons every day. You can also go to boyersfood.com for our weekly circular, monthly super specials, and much more. It's all at Boyers Food Markets in Hazleton and McAdoo. When it comes to your health, you need to put your trust in a team of experienced professionals. Mountain City Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, an extend care facility, has one goal in mind, helping people live better. Short-term rehabilitation is our business. Mountain City offers you a chance to recover on our STAR unit, a short-term unit for patients who need some rehab before going home. We provide dedicated nursing and therapy services and offer you a personalized plan of recovery through our evidence-based recovery track programming. Mountain City helps me live better. Welcome back, everyone. It was a landmark election, one that will go down in Luzerne County history. There were major upsets, while other candidates easily held their positions. Tonight, News 13 has your wrap-up of Decision Day 2011. We start with our Nikki Kreis, who has a recap of several important local races. I've never let Hazleton down, and now Hazleton didn't leave me down. There were a lot of smiles and cheers at the Hazleton Elks Lodge Tuesday night as Mayor Joe Yanuzzi thanked his supporters after finding out he was re-elected. I now have four years to not worry about being re-elected. I have four years to save our city, our great city, Hazleton. It was a close race, but Yanuzzi defeated Democrat Grace Cuzo by 158 votes. I'm very proud. I think the people that helped me were great, and I think I did a good job. But I think it also said to Joe, you're not, we're not happy here. If it was that close, there is something not right, and maybe Joe will listen now. There was some shuffling around when it came to Hazleton City Council. Longtime incumbent Evelyn Graham was not elected to another term, but she tells News 13 she still has high hopes for Hazleton. Just the same as it has always been to try to somehow stay out of debt, continue with the good works we've done so far, 
and hope for the future. Top vote getter Keith Bast was overwhelmed by the support but says he's ready to get on board. Get our fiscal house, everything is starting to come together and start doing everything that we can to improve the conditions of the city, try to attract businesses to come in. And, and taking a step forward in the direction of the city. Democrat Jean Mope will be another new face. She held a writing campaign in the primary. We need to focus on the infrastructure of the city first, like I said once before. The city has to get together. We have to go over each department, see where our weaknesses are, where our strengths need to be, our assets, anything that we're vulnerable to vulnerable in, we have to correct and fix these problems in-house first. Over in Hazel Township, the voters have spoken. Incumbent Bill Gallagher was re-elected as supervisor over Richard Wenches. We're working on the roads again. We're working on the new road. We started to tree going toward the bridge. Hopefully maybe another year or two we'll have the dinner connect into Arby's. Uh, a lot of projects. You know, the township's so big that, you know, any, any small project is always a big project for us. We're going to keep doing what we can do, you know, giving them the best in fire protection and, and trying to get the roads cleaned in the storms and just keep going where we were going. A race that was uncontested in Hazel Township was that of Magisterial District Judge. Jamie Dixon was elected to the position. I, I can't wait to take over and, and, and start my new position. I have a lot of changes that I'd like to make and obviously we'll treat everyone fair and impartially and do the right thing to make the community a safer place. West Hazelton voters have elected a new face to council. Paul Platukas is a former administrator in the Hazelton Area School District. In the first ward, Tom Nemeth received the most votes, and in the second ward, James Kalaga ran uncontested. And over on the north side, Freeland Mayor Tammy Martin held on to her position. The incumbent is happy to continue to serve the borough. We're just going to continue to work for, move forward until everything we were working. We're getting our police department back where it should be. The streets department's back where it should be. We're going to try to straighten everything out and move forward from there. Two incumbent council members retain their seats in Freeland, John Petoskey and John Buda. What you can see in the future is more cooperation. I think uh, we have a uh, good, strong police force in town now and uh, good streets department, and I think we're, uh, we're moving forward. We're going to do the best we can to uh, keep improving the security and the police department fire department and safety for the citizens of Freeland and visitors. Former Councilwoman Barbara Talanowski won the third seat on Borough Council. I'm Nikki Kreis for News 13. All right, Nikki, thank you so much. Now to the rest of the races in Luzerne, Carbon, and Schuylkill counties. News 13's Christina Damano continues tonight's coverage of our election results with more from the winners. News 13 was in Butler Township as longtime police chief Charlie Ottmiller was declared the next supervisor. Ottmiller defeated Jim Caffrey. I'm grateful for everybody that, that came out and voted for me. And I wanted to, uh, I know that there's people behind the scenes like my manager, Francis Petrovich, who worked diligently and on. And I was just thankful for everybody that put their faith in me. Ottmiller might have a chance to start work as a supervisor sooner than other election winners because of the vacancy left by the death of Robert Shellhammer. The township's vacancy board scheduled a meeting for tonight. They could appoint Ottmiller to fill the vacancy right away. I have to put my uh, faith in the two gentlemen that are in there right now and go with them at the beginning of this session and uh, also be open to public opinions from everybody. Uh, you know, I, I, need, I need help. I can't do this on my own, and I think that people in the Valley can give me good sound advice, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Tricia Schott was elected the first female township supervisor in the history of Banks Township, and it was a very close race for Cunningham Council's four open seats. What a battle of the ballot it was with around 525 write-in votes. News 13 spoke with Mayor Joe Corelli last night who says even with the write-ins, these people came out on top. Some media outlets are reporting that Gary Gregory, Jill Hawk, Rose Hart, and Raymond Montoni are the winners. We can continue on being for Cunningham first and keeping the agenda that we had in the past and to work with uh, our authority on coming up with a 537 plan, on coming up with a new agreement. I'm glad that we're moving on and 
we're, wor we're going to be working together, I hope, with everyone on board now uh, as far as the authority is concerned. And again, we have to focus on thinking about Cunningham. Cunningham is first, as far as I'm concerned. Incumbents Mary LaBert, William Slovic, and Marion DeBalco kept their seats on McAdoo Borough Council. John Perhonich joins them. Well, I'm just grateful and humble that uh, Macro citizens came out to vote, as many as they did. And um, I just appreciate everybody who did come out and all my other co-candidates and the mayor for uh, all that he did. And I really want to really, I'm looking forward to working with them and moving the town forward. Well, I hope we can move forward and, and get some of these things accomplished on the streets and, the, and some of the derelict buildings that we have. And, uh, move on from there with the police department also. And we thank all the people of McAdoo for coming out to vote and for voting for us. Democrats swept the race for three seats on Beaver Meadows Borough Council. Voters picked Anthony Rusnock, Alfred Mitchell, and Richard Donald. Christina D'Amato, News 13. All right, three were welcomed back and two new faces will be added to the Hazleton Area School Board. Incumbents Dr. Bob Childs, Tony Manomo, and Brian Early will return to the board. Two first-time candidates were also elected. Retired teacher Robert Wallace received the most votes, and Republican Marfi Dagenhart Yannick won the fifth seat on the board, beating out Democratic candidate Rocco Formica. Childs, Bonomo, Early, and Wallace both won the Democratic and Republican nominations in the May primary. Dagenhart Yannick and Formica were the only candidates to appear on just one ballot. News 13 spoke to each of the winners last night on our live election special. Many say they can't wait to sit down and do what is best for the kids. All right, there's much more to come today here on your community news station. Freddie B's up next with what's new in the world of local sports. Sorry about that. My earpiece went out, so I couldn't hear where I was going. And later, we'll tell you how you can help others have a very merry holiday season. Operation Care and Share is back, and we'll tell you much more when we return. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on Channel 13, you will have 13 minutes to fund and win a free pay-per-view movie from Service Electric Cable Vision. Tonight's winner, Ronald Bianco of Hazel Township. Ronald, if you're watching, give us a call right now at 570-459-9813 to win your free movie. Feisner Ford in Freeland has the best deals. New at Feisner Ford, the Hunter High Capacity, open and closed front alignment rack, and the Road Force Tire Balancer. You'll only get them here. We can align rollbacks, ambulances, vans, and construction vehicles. And we also offer free alignment checks with any vehicle service appointment. Feisner Ford is where you'll find the best deals on new and used vehicles. The best deals. Check out the newly designed Chrysler 200, or how about the two-door Jeep Wrangler or four-door Unlimited. Jeep Patriot is named best Price SUV in America. Jeep Grand Cherokee styling is second to none. Jeep Compass named top 10 fuel-efficient SUV with sophisticated styling. It's Ram commercial truck season. Get what you deserve, power, performance, and a Dodge Ram. How about Dodge Journey? Seat 7 with four-wheel drive, a winning combination. Dodge Durango, let the towing begin. Best in class, up to 7,400 pound capability. It's All-American Tamaqua. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. The opening round of the state playoffs going on in a couple of sports. Field hockey, one of them, and even though the Hazleton team isn't involved, we got some regional teams, teams representing the Wyoming Valley Conference, so let's check in, see what we've got here. And we'll start, obviously, with the uh, AAA. You take a look. Owen Roberts Hempfield, what well, was Hempfield getting by there? Archbishop Carroll, Penn Manor, they get the win. And how about Emmaus? They outlast Springford 3 2, so they have a nice win right there. Other half of the bracket, well, Wyoming Valley West gets shut out by Whitehall. Imagine that. It's a team that uh, dominated here. They go down and play Whitehall, and they can't score. 4 0 is the final there. Warwick, 2 1 winners over Unionville. Lower Dolphin and Central Dolphin come away with the wins in uh, girls field hockey in that AAA division. Double A, Villa Maria Academy shuts out Mannheim. And how about this one? The Crestwood Lady Comets get upended by Greenwood. It was a close one, but Greenwood comes away with the 3-2 win. Sealands Grove, same score. They get by with the win, and Fleetwood shuts out Archbishop Wood. And again, 
This is uh, double A field hockey opening round games. That would be uh, yesterday. Let's go finally down to uh, the other half of the uh, bracket where Wyoming Sem still alive and well. 3-2 was a popular score yesterday. Karen Kloster's team gets by Donegal. Southern Lehigh, Palmyra, and Shadyside Academy advance in the field hockey playoffs. Let's move over to girls volleyball, where our winners were Hempfield, Strathaven, Pine Richland, and Upper Marion in that half of the bracket. Strathaven takes out Delaware Valley again. Delaware Valley looked unbeatable up here in northeastern Pennsylvania, and Strathaven takes care of them three to one. Other winners, Parkland shuts out Downingtown East straight sets, and State College gets by Penn Manor three to one. Double A bracket, Susquehannock and West Allegheny, Fort LaBeouf, all straight set winners, three zip as you go across the board right there and closer to home. Holy Redeemer showing that they are the real deal. 3-1 winners over Tawanda, Hopewell, and Southern Lehigh come away with wins. So the state playoffs are on for the girls fall sports. How about the boys? Well, it's soccer, triple-A action. Conestoga over Wilson. Uh, Abington Heights shut out by Central Bucks East. Hempfield and Council Rock North get the wins there. Central Dolphin over Central Bucks. State College, Upper St. Clair, and Erie Cathedral Prep winners. Double A, Lancaster Mennonite, Scranton Prep, Holy Ghost Prep, and Moravian Academy are your winners in that half of the bracket, while uh, Topolo Hoken, Bell Vernon, Hampton, and South Park win in that half of the bracket. So uh, we'll keep an eye on it and let you know as the race goes toward the finish line for all of those uh, PIAA sports that are taking place right now. Junior high basketball tonight, a little bit closer to home. This is the championship for the Girls Anthracite League. It's drums against Freeland. It'll be down at the Big House, Hazleton Area High School at 7 p.m. And uh, there is an admission charge. Should be an interesting game. And uh, that'll put the wraps on the uh, junior high basketball for the 2011 season. Well, it's uh, steak and ale night up at Bottlenecks. And that's always a good night, a lot of good fun. You get uh, your choice of specialty hand-cut steaks. And boy, I'll tell you what, they've got all of the trimmings that go with them, including bottomless fries, great beer menus too, 14 different flat screen TVs in the kitchen open at midnight. Put it all together, it's bottlenecks, great place to be. Osteoporosis is defined as the thinning of bone tissue and the loss of bone density. There are no symptoms in the early stages, but later include lower back pain, neck pain, and stooped posture. Chiropractic care works on relieving symptoms associated with osteoporosis. Call Dr. Joe Bafil at Bafil Family Chiropractic today for a complimentary consultation. 570-788-3737. Your eyes are the windows to your world. Doctors Kislin and Wozmanski want you to know that preventative eye exams are an important part of your family's health care. Early diagnosis and treatment of eye diseases are critical to maintaining good vision. Dr. Alexandra Wozmanski specializes in pediatric care and performs ocular diabetic exams, cataract evaluations, and LASIK screenings on patients of all ages. She's welcoming new patients at both the Hazleton and Stroudsburg Eye Specialist locations. Visit us online at drkislin.com. An honest day's work has long been ingrained into the fabric of this region and its people. Doing your best not because you're told to do so, but because it's for a greater good. So while we appreciate being recognized for our hard work, we wouldn't have done it any other way. From a bank that considers exceptional customer satisfaction just part of the job description, First National Bank, the right choice, right here, right now. 
Stop by the Hollywood Diner this weekend. Friday, Strawberry Jam is in the house, 9 to 1, with domestic drafts and Long Island's on special. Saturday, Chixie Dicks, 9 to 1, domestic drafts and Long Island's also on special. You can check out the Hollywood Diner specials every day of the week on the airport beltway. Remember, at the Hollywood Diner, everyone is treated like a star. All right, tis the season for giving back and helping those who are less fortunate. As the holiday months are quickly approaching, News 13 and the Standard Speaker are looking forward to doing just that by providing food to those who need it the most. Do you remember our food drive called Greater Hazelton Area Operation Care and Share? Well, we are kicking off the campaign to help out Catholic Social Services. All you have to do is drop off non-perishable goods at News 13 or the Standard Speaker. And to learn more about Operation Care and Share, make sure you tune into a special Sam LaSant show on Tuesday night. A cool off on the way. How low will the temp go after all the nice warm days we've been having? Let's check it out. Tonight we do see a chance of showers. Some clouds move in. We see the temp dipping down to 43 degrees. And as we move right to your four day outlook, you see Thursday and Friday cloud filled with rain showers. And then Saturday and Sunday, the sun returns. Some clouds remain, but there you go. 52 on Thursday. 44 on Friday, 45 on Saturday, and Sunday 49 will be our high. Your forecast live at 530 brought to you by the Lazy Dog Salon, dog and cat grooming on North Broad Street in West Hazleton. You can call them for an appointment for your furry friend at 459-0310. All right, well, I think Mother Nature is going to be crying tonight and tomorrow because she's just as upset as we are to be losing Nikki Cries here on News 13. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> You're making me cry. <laughs> um, Nikki is moving on to, uh, uh, in her career, and uh, we wish her all the luck. She's going to be <laughs> moving to another station in the area, so you'll still be able to uh, tune in if, if you love to watch Nikki just as much as all of us do here at News 13. So, Nikki, we thought we'd bring you up, and um, we got you some flowers. Here's a gift on behalf of all of us here at News 13, and let you say something. Thank you so much. I, looking at camera too. Okay, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna cry just like you are. I I just want to say that thank you to everyone in the Greater Hazelton community. Ugh, listen to me crying. Um, thank you to everyone in the Greater Hazelton community for everything over the years. I started here a little over three years ago, and the entire community has been so welcoming to me. And I've gotten the chance to meet so many of you, and I, I, everything goes out when I'm trying to say what I want to <laughs> say, and I can't even think of what I want to say, but thank you to the LaSant family for giving me this opportunity. Sam, Debbie, Sam Jr., and Janine, I love you all, and Kristen, you opened up your house to me three years ago, and Christina, great roommate, and Gary, my favorite intern of all time, and now you're working here. I just, I love everybody that I work with, and it's been a pleasure. All right, well, as we say goodbye to all of you at home, I hope you'll join with us in saying goodbye to Nikki here on News 13. That does it for us. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Good night, everyone. <laughs>
When it comes to your health, you need to put your trust in a team of experienced professionals. Mountain City Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, an extend care facility, has one goal in mind, helping people live better. Short-term rehabilitation is our business. Mountain City offers you a chance to recover on our STAR unit, a short-term unit for patients who need some rehab before going home. We provide dedicated nursing and therapy services and offer you a personalized plan of recovery through our evidence-based recovery track programming. Mountain City helps me live better. 